Today's topic of discussion is on ways of acquiring math. The manners in which maths can be acquired are various in tribal India. Marriages among the non-literates are basically a secular contract and so it is necessarily not accompanied with religious solemnization as like that of Hindu marriages. It must be noted, however, that among several tribes, like the Kashi, for instance, Marias has had something of a religious sanction also. Marias brings together not just two individuals, but two families in a network of social obligations. There are eight important ways of acquiring a mat on the basis of data reported from Tribal India. They adopt various methods of acquiring mats to achieve different objectives in the society where they belong, such as to find compatible mat, to safeguard their own tribe by marrying the enemy tribe's girl. Purchase of mat, marriages by rendering services, exchange marriages to avoid expenditure, elopement, and even includes acquiring mat by intrusion. Acquiring a mat by provision. Acquiring a mat by provision involves the consent of the girl's parents besides the consent of the girl's herself. For example, amongst the cookies of Manipur, when a boy is fond of a girl, the girl's parent permit the boy to live with the girl in their house for several weeks and try to understand each other. If the boy and the girl find each other's temperament to be suitable and compatible. The parents of the girl decide to give their daughter in marriage to the boy. If the boy and the girl find each other's temperament to be unsuitable and incompatible, they separate and the boy pays cash compensation to the girl's parents. Acquiring a mat by capture can be found in many parts of the world. Capture may be physical capture or ceremonial capture. In physical capture, a boy adopts a procedure whereby he carries away the girl by force and marries her. Physical capture takes place in various situations. In one situation, a boy may seize a girl from an enemy camp or village, takes her away as a feminine prize, and will marry her. Among the Yahoma of Venezuela and northern Brazil, men of one village abduct women from other villages and take them as their spouses. Among the Nagas of Nagaland and Arunasal Pradesh, there will be rats by one village on another. During such rats, men capture women and accept them as wives. A boy who loves a girl 
but could not get his love reciprocated by the girl ventures to take away the girl by force and marry her. That means the kidnapping takes place without the consent of the girl. This kind of physical capture occurs among the Bhagatas and Sauras of Andhra Pradesh, the Ho of Bihar, who call it Opal TV, and the Bills of Rajasthan. In ceremonial capture, a boy adopts a procedure whereby he surprises the girl by marking her forehead with a symbol that tantamount to marriage. Among the Karya and the Birhor of Bihar, a man desirous of marrying a girl whom he cannot acquire by a more straightforward method would wait for her in a public place or at a fair, and then surprise her by applying vermilion mixed with oil to her forehead. This act of the boy is regarded as equivalent to his marriage with a girl. Why people get a wife by capture? One reason is the security of women. For example, the Nagas practice female infanticide because of the fear of rats by the enemies. Due to this reason, often they had to get a mat from enemy groups. Another reason is that physical capture is chief and adventuresome, although it is risky too. For example, the who have to pay a heavy bright price if a mat is to be chosen by negotiation. Hence, capturing a woman is considered as the best solution to avoid payment of heavy bright price. A third reason is the inability of parents to arrange the marriages of their daughters in time. For example, if the Muria Gons of Basta do not have the marriages of their daughter in time, they encourage her close cousin to take her away. Marriages by trial is the recognition of personal courage and bravery as highly desirable traits in a young man to prove his prowess before he can claim the hand of any girl in marriage. If he succeeds in the task assigned to him, he has the right to name any girl as his wife. Such a kind of practice is still prevalent among the will till now. As for instance, during the holy festival, young men and women practice a folk dance round a pole or a tree to the top of which coconut and gold, a piece of jaggery, are tied. The trial of strength begins when a young man attempts to break through the inner ring to reach and climb the tree to eat the gore and break open the coconut. If a daring man succeeds in reaching the top of the tree, he has to choose any of the surrounding girls as his wife and take her away immediately. Marriage by what has been called Persis is found prevalent all over tribal in India. The Naga tribes pay a bright price and so do the tribes in Middle India. The Rangma Naga pay a bright price but no economic significance 
is attached to it. However, as Louis has pointed out, the economic aspect of the practice of bright price payment is not negligible. The amount of bright price to be fed is so high and it is against one's status and prestige to accept a lower amount for one's side that many young men and women remain unmarried. Marriage by service is another approved way of getting a wife in the primitive society. It may also be called bright service, which requires the groom to work for his bride's family, sometimes before the marriage and sometimes afterwards. Bride price varies in duration. It is the way to secure a bride among the Purums of Manipur. According to the custom, the prospective groom has to serve in the house of the bride's parents for three years. He may be required to perform any work assigned to him. After the set period is over, if the parents of the bride are satisfied at the service of the young man, they give their daughter in marriage to him. Such type of marriage is also found among the Gones, the Dufflers, etc. Among the Northern Alaska Eskimos, the boy works for his in-laws after the marriage is arranged. To oblige them, he may simply catch a shield for them. This method of acquiring a mat is real. Ivan's preacher, in his study of 241 tribal groups, found that only 30 observe it. In our country, the Vils and the Gons occasionally observe marriages by service. There is a practice among some tribes and even among the lower and intermediate castes to marry by exchange. It is a practice which saps a man from paying the bride price. It is a modified form of marriage by purchase. According to this, the brother gives his sister in marriage to another man and gets the latter sister as his wife. In this case, there is no transaction of bright price. This form of marriage thus helps both the families from any expenditure. In most of the Indian tribes, this means of acquiring a mat is sometimes practiced. In many tribal societies, marriages by love or mutual consent is prevalent. The Ho call it Raji Kushi marriages. When the boy and the girl are in love and decide to become met of each other in future life, they inform the guardians who formally celebrate the marriages. In Hindu society, as well as in some other societies, marriage by love is considered to be of lower standard than the marriage by negotiation. Match selection by elopement occurs among the Fiji of Oceania, Gusli of Kenya, Ivan of Borneo, Red Indian, and Ojiwa Red Indians of United States. Kaingang Red Indians of Brazil, Kurnai of Australia, Samoa of Polynesia, and other tribes of Andhra Pradesh, and many other societies. 
Mad selection by elopement takes place in every known society. Elopement usually involves running off, then waiting for some days or months or even one or two years and hoping that the marriages will finally be approved. Generally speaking, the indulgent elders always receive back the overborn elop peer and allow them to live as wife and husband. It is another peculiar mode of securing a mat which is practiced by the Senju, the Santal, the Ho, and others. Acquiring a mat by intrusion may occur in the following two situations. Firstly, a girl may force a boy she is fond of, but who is unwilling to accept her as his mat. Secondly, mat selection by intrusion may happen if a woman tries to assert herself and secure a rightful status for her when the man designs to ignore his responsibility. Besides the above mentioned ways of acquiring a mat, we may also discuss the following three different forms of acquiring a mat, which are as follows. Number one, adoptive marriages. According to this custom of marriages, a young man is adopted into a family and the girl belonging to that family is married to him. After marriages, the couple live generally in the bride's family. It is practiced in Indonesia and modern Japan. Number two, visit marriages. When the husband does not even live with the bride, but visits her only at conventional times, it is called visit marriages. The union was publicly established. It is found among the Nairs of South India. Number three, ghost marriages. If a man married or unmarried dies without male issue, it becomes the duty of one of his kinsmen to marry a woman on his behalf. The sons of such a union are legally the children of the dead man and inherit social or ritual privileges which he should normally pass on to his sons. This custom of ghost marriages is found among the newer of Africa. Let us draw the conclusion. The way of acquiring a mat refers to the characteristic manner in which a spouse is selected. It is the procedure or method of finding or obtaining a wife or husband. To be precise, it may be called the manner of mat choice or spouse selection. However, the study of the varying means of acquiring a mat indicate that the core aspect of primitive marriages is the payment of bride price. It is argued that bride price has to be paid by the parents of the girl, for they not only gave birth to the girl, but also brought her up, nursed her, and in the present context educated her. Bride price is considered to be valid compensation for such a long period of the rearing girl.